contract, uh, interesting conversation, like continuing the program, uh, which from now on is about AI and uh, data product development. Uh, and the next topic is designing and engaging products, designing engaging products with AI. And the next speaker is Livio, who is head of AI at Mindspins. Uh, Livio is an AI engineer focused on building and democratizing trustworthy AI with seven years of experience in machine learning, data science, and software engineering. His main responsibilities include leading and coordinating the development of the Mindspins platform, a technology used for creating AI first products. So, Livio, I invite you to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I hope you're well fed and uh, ready to listen. Listen to me ramble on. So today I'd like to share with you uh, our way of designing products with AI. And I hope to share what we've learned over the, over the past couple of years. It's been like five or six years since we've been using our methodology. And I hope it's going to be useful. OK. First, let's talk about user engagement. What is it? Why do we care, etc. So an engagement is basically, per Wikipedia, any kind of interaction between a customer and a brand. Very vague, I know. Uh, I hope to get through some examples so it's going to be clearer. Uh, but what, what I want to focus on most is that uh, most products I've seen fail to integrate with our lives and therefore never achieve high levels, of, high levels of user engagement. Now, I think that's a shame because many of the products I've seen have very high potential and uh, I would love to pay a few bucks to them uh, so that I can delegate some of my problems to, to these products, but their format is is simply wrong. It doesn't integrate nicely with my life. I'm not able to use it frictionless uh, and so on. And I really want them to succeed because like, like I said, I have a million things in my, my life I have to th think about and one last thing would be great. Uh, some of the things uh, I would like to highlight also is that some of the things in, that we have to think about in our lives are important things that never uh, get our attention. For example, uh, when was the last time you were at your dentist? Uh, probably should have been. Yeah? <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, did you create a long-term savings plan? Maybe yes, maybe not. So some of these things uh, would also be great if we could have the time to think about them or if we could delegate these, these things to someone else and make our lives much better. Okay, uh, so this is precisely the crux of engagement. Uh, we engage with products that create value for us continuously. Uh, that's step number one. Also, engagement is a sign that your customers trust you, trust your brand. And the third sign of engagement is high potential for organic growth, but more, more on that later. Uh, An more important side note, I'm not talking about the kind of engagement here that requires your users to open your app daily, spend uh, a lot of hours on it and so on, which is usually seen in ad-based ad pricing models. I'm talking about the kind of engagement where uh, you want your users using your app or product or service, doesn't matter, uh, in the long term, when they need it, however seldom that is, which is like usually some kind of a subscription-based model. Okay, side note aside. Uh, I wanna talk here to companies or enterprises or startups, scale-ups, whatever, that uh, whose mission is to create value for their users. Why am I uh, saying this again and again? Because nothing breaks engagement like the feeling that you're being used or that you're being uh, deceived, that they want to squeeze more money from you and so on and so on. Uh, which is basically great if you don't plan on staying. <laughs> if you don't plan on staying, scam people. Seriously, it's the optimal strategy to get the most money in the shortest amount of time. 
Uh, but I give you no guarantees on your safety from the law and from the people you scam. Uh, jokes aside, I want to talk to companies whose uh, mission is building a long-lasting business. So, okay, let's get into it. What is wrong with the format of the apps, services, products uh, that I mentioned? It's going to sound ridiculous, but most apps require you to use them. I'm going to let that sink in because it sounds ridiculous even to me. Uh, what do I want to say? My goal, remember, is to delegate some of my problems to an external party, whether it's a service, whether it's a, a human, doesn't matter. And I do not have the time or the energy to look for your app, open it, learn how to use it, if I'm lucky enough with, after some time, solve my problem. I especially don't have time to go back and do that whole cycle again and again and again if I need to solve, uh, if, if I need to solve my problem. Sometimes I don't even know what my problem is and if I have it. Uh, for example, I was uh, until recently not aware that it's a good investment strategy to create uh, a savings plan <laughs> as soon as possible. Yeah, and that's why I have you. You are the experts in your field, your company, uh, your product, and I beg you, please help me figure out what I'm doing wrong, uh, how you can help me, uh, where am I using uh, unoptimized shortcuts in my life. Uh, and like a common idea I hear is, as a solution to what I'm saying is, uh, let's build another feature, yet another feature I have to think about, learn, waste my time on. And I do not want to do that. Because, as research points out, 97% of users only use the features on the front screen uh, of your app, and all of the other features are unused, have no engagement, blah, 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 so on. Uh, okay, so if that's where most app services products fail uh, with regards to engagement, what can we do? So for the past five or six years, we've been build building products with a new paradigm. And we've seen incredible results uh, with regards to engagements. I'm talking 80%, 90%, 95% engagements. Uh, results our clients and even their industries have never seen before. And there's a very simple idea at the core, but it requires us to shift our way of thinking a bit. It says, guide me. Like I said earlier, please don't make me jump through hoops. Uh, stop building more tools that I'm not going to use. Build me a mentor, a companion, a private doctor, private digital banker. I don't know, doesn't matter. Uh, whatever you're doing, build me yourself, your expertise in a digital scalable format because you don't have the time to talk with me and a billion other people that want your advice, right? And then instead of sitting like a tool, the thing you have built, be proactive. Tell me when you have a recommendation for me. Tell me when I'm being stupid. Tell me when I'm using uh, shortcuts in my life, like I said. Tell me when you can automate something I'm wasting my time on. And almost any product, uh, I think, can be reshaped into this uh, to give guidance instead of being a tool. Uh, I'm going to give you a few seconds to read because I see some of you are reading still. Uh, but then let me show you some examples because talk is good, but results are better. Case one, diagnosing PCOS. We, uh, this was our first case ever. I think it was like six years ago. 
and we were working with a German health tech startup. They have uh, more than 12 million monthly active users, and they're building this mm, period tracking app, but they want to uh, expand it to be like a women health app. But they have problems with ad engagement on their more advanced features. PCOS, PCOS polycystic ovary syndrome, is uh, is one of these apps. Sorry, uh, one of these features, and you can see all, all the rest uh, there uh, sitting unused. And we said, uh, okay, if these features are not used, then Let's build this one thing, your companion, that's going to be your uh, sidekick in, in your women's health. And it can talk about all of these things, uh, but it's going to talk uh, with you only about those that are relevant to you. How does this work in practice? So it's this agent, companion, uh, whatever you want to call it, is living there somewhere in the cloud, Spinning, thinking, analyzing your 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 data uh, that you're entering, and uh, it sees an anomaly, and it says, "Hey, your period seem to be irreg irregular. Uh, would you like to check what's going on?" And then you answer a few questions, and it says, either it says, "Look." This is normal in some situations if you've been recently doing this or that. Or it says, hey, I have some good news and some bad news. Bad news is you may have uh, PCOS, which is affecting 10% of women worldwide, which is insane. Uh, and, and none of us know about it. Uh, that's the bad news, but the good news is now we have an explanation for the sim symptoms you've been experiencing, and you can get the treatment you, you need for these symptoms to get back your, uh, to your normal life. And this has shortened the average diagnose uh, length, whatever the, the correct term is, from six years to three months. Why? Because you already have this data in your app, you're tracking your period uh, monthly. You don't have to go from doctor to doctor to doctor who doesn't know even what PCOS is, uh, going through various medical exams to, to figure out what's wrong with you. Now, there are many other features like this uh, that can help you. For example, I have I IBS and I'm still waiting for them to to, to crack IBS, uh, irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, the next case, probably our most uh, well-known, is in personal healthcare. You may have heard of Maggie. We were in collaboration with Magdalena Clinic uh, a few years ago, and we wanted to crack the problem of hypertension. So hypertension is high blood pressure, constant high blood pressure. It affects, I forgot the number, but it's, it's a huge portion of the society, especially the elderly uh, society. And the thing with it is it's a chronic disease. It's untreatable. And like I said, there's loads of these patients, but there's few, very few doctors who, who, who can actually uh, help them deal with it. And we wanted to like solve this uh, basically resource star starvation problem. And of course, in, in an ideal world, uh, every one of us would have our private doctor sitting next to us and we would feel uh, cared for and carefree. Uh, but the reality is this. Uh, most of the time we're at home, we're, uh, we fear for our lives because at any point the blood pressure can spike and bad things can happen to us and we have no idea what to do then. Then we go to ER, then we wait for the doctor's appointment, which are user usually every six months, not good, uh, and so on. And what's worst is for doctors, 
these are the most boring patients. There's loads of them and they have the same thing. And it's just a matter of finding the right combination of pills to, to settle the symptoms. Okay, let's see how we can apply this new paradigm of guidance to, to this problem and help not only patients and doctors, but the whole uh, healthcare system. Uh, this is a sketch of our solution. The yellow thing is, and the weird thing is there are AI agents which live in the cloud. And our idea is mostly, uh, let's give every stakeholder, every person in this whole equation, their own agent. So there was, we called it Maggie. There was Maggie for patients, Maggie for the nurse, and Maggie for doctors. Uh, there, the, the task of these agents is to care for their person. So Maggie for patients was uh, making sure that the patient had uh, all the information that he or she needs. Uh, when something bad happens, to give guidance on what are the steps to, uh, to, to do to mitigate the problem. And if it's really serious, it would contact the uh, Maggie for nurse, who would then either send the patient to an ER, uh, schedule an appointment, ask the doctor for for uh, new, what do you call it, new medication, uh, because she doesn't have the privileges and so on. And the and Maggie for a nurse had the task of handling all these patients, and if there were edge cases, Maggie wasn't allowed to solve because of various uh, legal constraints or, or others, she would ask the nurse, hey, can you jump in, can you help me with this patient? I'm not sure what to do here, or I am not allowed to do it, do, uh, do what I think should be done, and that's this. And then the nurse would say, okay, next. Uh, similar thing with the doctor. Uh, of course, in the most urgent and uh, necessary cases, the patient would get to see the doctor a lot faster than he would normally see him uh, in, in the system. You'll see, you'll see why. Uh, this is how it looked like, looked like in practice. So you, as a patient and as a doctor, could chat with Maggie through some kind of a communication channel. And Maggie could draw all these uh, graphs uh, and such. Now, it's when you see this, uh, I think it's very easy to, to say, ooh, just another chatbot. But it's not. Uh, Maggie was actually living in the cloud, and this channel was just one of her communication channels with the people around her. She could also send emails, draw graphs, uh, add things to your calendar, gather information from other agents, and so on. And she was constantly analyzing the patient's uh, data, and they uh, so they were entering their their blood pressure blood pressure measurement values uh, almost every day. Uh, and then she would say, "Okay, now this this measurement seems a little off. Did you just?" Uh, do some extraneous physical activity? No. Are you feeling any kind of pain? No. Okay, let's uh, take a quick breather for 15 minutes and measure again. Stuff like that. Uh, and in the serious cases, other, other actions would follow. Like I said, uh, scheduling an appointment and so on. Uh, now, Maggie is not just a machine. Maggie is 97 parts of a machine, but in those rare cases, uh, a human needs to intervene. Now, we've realized that in most of these irregular cases, uh, a non-medical expert can easily fill in the shoes. Why? Because uh, th those patients of ours quickly grew attached to Maggie, and then they started sending pictures of their grandchildren and congratulating us on uh, for Christmas and so on. And these kinds of uh, queries can be easily solved by, by, by a regular human to give that human touch when needed. 
and when not, like I said, the medical professional was there. And it turned out these are real, real numbers. It turned out that the medical professional was needed in actually less than 0.5% of cases. Whoops. Okay. Always clicking the wrong button and there are just two of them. Uh, so here are the results. Uh, we did 12 months of testing with this pilot project. We had 78 patients and 74 of them were still active after 12 months. Can anyone calculate the engagement rate real quickly? I'm gonna save us some time, it's 95%. So it's, it's an incredible engagement rate and this was just a pilot project without some heavy engagement optimizations we could have done. Actually those four patients quit because they were, uh, they were fine, they were like, younger people who didn't want to measure their blood pressure every day and then later on we we added okay if you're fine you can measure your blood pressure once a month or whatever uh, now this is not the only thing we have observed the other another thing we observed is that like it says here an average control examination lasts for 22 minutes that's extremely slow. That's like less than three patients per hour a doctor can handle. And 15 of those 22 min uh, minutes are spent on acquiring information. Hello, how are you? What's it been like? Does it hurt? When does it hurt? In the morning, in the day, during the evenings? Oh, it hurts like mostly in the evenings. Okay, are you doing some physical exercise before, no, etc., etc. And this is what state of the art looked like uh, before Maggie. And it's still used all over the country. Maybe some of you have it, I hope not. Uh, my grandpa has it. Uh, and when you ask doctors, okay, well, what can you see here from this? They'll tell you, Ah, uh, look, we can't see anything. But this gives the patient a sense they're doing something for themselves. <laughs> it's like, it's so sad. Uh, and what we've decided to do with Maggie is give uh, the doctor more information so, so that he can give relevant, uh, so that, that he can get relevant information on which to base the, the medication on. And this is what, what we've come up with in collaboration with these doctors. And now the, there's a treasure trove of information here. I'm not going through it all, but you can see here uh, that basically uh, we can highlight some points. Okay, there were higher blood pressures here, but they can be ex explained by this and this. Uh, then there was a case uh, on the far right when we had to send the person to the ER because something happened and then doctor can focus on that event, see what happened, and so on. Uh, so, in the end, it turned out that Maggie can shorten this data acquisition time to four minutes. If we do some math, that halves the time of a control examination, which in turn doubles the amount of patients a doc uh, doctor can see in a day without any more cognitive effort, I would say. Here is another kind of visualization that the doctor had access to. So basically we can see here, uh, these are the blood pressure averages in the morning, during the day and in the evening, systolic and diabolic blood pressure. Uh, and the, the columns are before therapy, after therapy. So this graph was designed to check if the current therapy is working or not. And in this particular example, you can see that therapy was working because the average blood pressure during the day and in, in the evening dropped drastically. Now, what does this allow us to do? Well, similar to PCOS, let's reiterate. The doctor has immediate access to the information of patients who are not well. They don't have to wait 
for six months to get to their next appointment, uh, tell the doctor it's still bad, and then he can do another iteration. Here we could do iterations like daily almost. And it shortened the, this therapy adjustment cycle from, like I said, six months to three weeks. This is a very curious uh, visualization which shows how many control examinations patient had in this 12 months. So, uh, sorry, six months. There were 148 visits to a hospital for this seven, no, it, it's the, it is the year because it's double. Uh, 148 visits to a hospital in, in this year. And this, is how many of them were needed. In 80% of the cases, the patient was fine and they had regulated blood pressure. It wasted the patient's time because they had to go to Krapina, where Magdalena Clinica is, uh, wait in that queue you saw, and go home finally. Uh, for the 20% of cases that were actually needed, they had, had to wait for six months to get it. Now, if we do some math again, uh, let's say we cut uh, out the unnecessary examinations. Why? Because Maggie knows how they are. Maggie can reassure them, hey, everything's fine, uh, I've sent your data, and your blood pressures look fine, don't worry, enjoy your life. They don't have to go to, to the control. Let's say we cut them out. And so that leaves us with a five-fold improvement. A doctor has, can see five times more patients in a day because of this. And when we couple that to the two-fold improvement uh, with the control uh, examination duration, it's a tenfold improvement on, of, of how much a doctor can handle patients right now with just these very two simple uh, hacks, solutions. Now, I think that there's some great potential there. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we were very satisfied with this solution. In our third case, we have worked with a huge regional telco and they had the very basic problem that every telco has, uh, which option is the optimal option for a user to use. So you have like, uh, no, I can't name names, sorry. <laughs> uh, so you have option X, which uh, gives you, I don't know, uh, which you pay 9.16 euros and you get, uh, I don't know how many gigabytes. Uh, and so on and so on. So what we did was, okay, again, let's build an agent. It's gonna run in the cloud. You don't have to install it. You don't have to open it every day. You don't have to ask it something. It's just running there in the background, uh, seeing how you use this, this option of yours. And then out of a sudden, it's, it contacts you and it says, hey, we've analyzed your usage and I have a more cost effective option for you. Great, if I'm interested, Click in. Uh, now we here we have another communication channel. It was a web app, and it says, "Hey, you're paying this much, using this much, and that's costing you this much." Now, if you if you activate option X for this and this, you can get more for less money, and you don't have to hassle with uh, ins activating uh, like additional no-call setup fee options and, and such. And you also get some nice perks. And this was a very simple, well, okay, the model behind it uh, is proprietary, but the format of the solution is, is very simple. Now, we, we wanted to go the extra mile here and personalize this experience because some users, like me, are very cheap and I just want the cheapest option available uh, because I don't need gigabytes, I have Wi-Fi everywhere, uh, and so on. 
other, op other uh, types of customers are, I don't want to worry about this. I don't care if it costs 10 euros or 12 euros, I'm going to pay it. Just don't let me be without internet, be without calls, uh, and so on. And for them, we had this price insensitive uh, offering, which said, okay, you're paying this much, you have to activate this again, you're using this, uh, you're nearing the limit of your option every time. Uh, if you uh, get this option Z, you get more, you don't have to do this each month again and again, and you get everything you need. Great. This is the aspect of personalization that you can do when each of your users, customers, patients has their personal agent running there, uh, collecting my, my uh, usage data, uh, seeing if I'm um, engaging more with these types of options or these types of options. We actually had a quiz before this use case and uh, there we learned if you want uh, which of these options you prefer more. Uh, I don't, I think I don't have the time to get into details, so I'll just cut to the results. There was a 300 fold uh, percent uh, conversion rate increase compared to theirs baseline and again more than 95% engagement rate and like any telco can do this. It's so simple, it's like their basic offering. Uh, case four, building careers. So there's a very large uh, college in Frankfurt, Germany, uh, which is very well known, and they have thousands of students. But they don't have just students. They also have various kinds of employees, uh, alumni, startups they're working with, experts on, on various kinds of stuff, and they wanted to connect all of these people in a more efficient way than, than it currently is. Currently they have like some kinds of, some kinds of events and networking uh, meetups, but these uh, notifications are so overwhelming. They're, they're, every day there's one and you, you get calls for all of these and all of them are just uh, routed to spam. Uh, there's also like a website where you can go and see all of these events, but uh, you need 5,000 clicks to get to it, log into your system uh, you don't use, and so on. And they want, wanted to solve this problem. Uh, additionally, they have what they call career advisors. And it's, it's very, same. it's actually the same problem as with doctors and patients. So these career advisors uh, are meant to help students uh, get the best of education in that school that they can. So uh, if they uh, keep our regular CV updated and they take it with them to these events and they talk with these people, uh, they can get much more than they're, if they're just listening to, to the uh, professors speak about, about their subjects, learn, pass the exams and move on. And these career advisors, I think there's like 20 of them, if I remember correctly, and there's 4, 000, more than 4,000 students. You do the math, it's impossible. Uh, the same paradigm here applies. Uh, I don't have the time to g get into it again, uh, but basically we've built this uh, agent for every student who says, uh, first you have an, an onboarding where you say, I'm interested in this and that, and then we tell you, uh, hey, this uh, event is coming up. Uh, Claudia Panico, who all of you have uh, certainly heard, <laughs> is speaking, but let's say Elon Musk is speaking about, uh, I don't know, batteries, if you're, if you're into that, or about autonomous vehicles or AI, if you're into that, and so on. Uh, go get there, it's gonna help you uh, in your career. Prepare like this in advance. Uh, one click sign up, and that's it. Uh, now, throughout all of these uh, projects we've had, we have, we've, we've had dozens more, 
we figure out the principles that are needed to make uh, this paradigm successful. Uh, one of these principles is these three, I call them laws. <laughs> They're not laws, but it's similar to the robotics laws. Uh, one, I have the expertise, so every agent, uh, every agent should be built by someone that's competent in, in uh, what they're meant to do. For example, we didn't build Maggie uh, on, with our own knowledge and Googling because no one would be willing to use a doctor that was built by an engineer like me. Uh, so we built it with doctors. That's like the baseline. It has to be useful. It has to create value. Second, I know you. That's the personalization step. Uh, I can take care of your specific needs. I'm not inviting you to a million events. I'm inviting you to these two events that I think would really help you. And the third is, I care about you, uh, and that's where, that's where all the magic happens uh, in this new paradigm. I'm going to proactively reach out to you, recommend it to you, hey, do that, and you're going to uh, be better, save some uh, money, I don't know, uh, live a healthier lifestyle, and so on. Uh, aside from that, we built a platform that enables us to build these kinds of systems really fast. Uh, we have uh, all kinds of like uh, good tips. Start with the pro prototype from the expert's knowledge, then incorporate ML, and so on and so on. Uh, I'm not going to go go much further. If you're interested, let's connect. Find us on these channels. You can email me directly, and I thank you for your attention.